Sean, it's so great to see so many of you joining us today. I can't believe we've got over 3,000 of you watching. How amazing is that? It's absolutely fantastic. We're here today for our new webinar series, Becca and Lizzie Meets. I'm Becca. And I'm Lizzie. And today we've got a very special guest with us. Say hello to Poppy. We went to see Poppy to film a very exciting video with her and to have a look at the newest JCB tractor. So we hope you enjoy the video and please keep sending your questions through because we'll be getting them di directly through to our phones and we want to hear from you and see what you've got to say. everyone we're Becca and Lizzie I'm Becca and I'm Lizzie and today we're here on the JCB farm to see the latest tractor but we need your help to learn about this tractor and also how it links to STEM subjects but Becca what is STEM well STEM stands for science technology engineering and maths and these subjects are very important when it comes to agriculture So we're here in the shed with a very large tractor and we're going to be saying hello to Poppy. Hi, my name's Poppy and I'm part of the Fast Track product team at JCB Agriculture. I have a really varied role day to day. Uh, since we've launched our new tractor earlier this year, I've been involved a lot in the technical training. Uh, so I've travelled to Lithuania, Denmark and Hungary to train our dealers on how to sell these great machines. That sounds amazing. How did you get into it? So I've come from a farming background. My dad's an agricultural engineer. Um, and then when I was in agricultural college, I went to Grass and Muck Show in Somerset and I spoke to every single manufacturer there to see who was offering apprenticeship schemes. And then in 2018, I started with JCB as an engineering technician apprentice. So there's lots of ways you can get in agriculture and you went to agricultural college, but what was your favourite thing about going there? I think the best part of Kingston Moorwood for me uh, was probably getting involved in all of the different types of tractors and seeing how they worked and just having a go at making all the repairs and seeing what we could do to help these tractors get better. So we're here with the Fast Track 4220, one of the five models in our range. So let's jump in the cab now and have a look at some of our best features. So farmers and tractor drivers spend a lot of their day in the cab. So we want to make this a really comfortable farm office for them. And part of this is how we developed our new armrest to make it as comfortable for the drivers as possible. So our joysticks fall easily to hand so no one's having to stretch or reach too far for any buttons. And we can set up this environment exactly how we want it. For example, we can drag and drop on our screen to highlight these hydraulic spool controls to the colors that we want them to be. So we've also integrated GPS systems into our new fast track cabs. This allows farmers to drive around the boundary, around the hedges of their field lines um, and create a map of the field, which will then make the tractor drive itself on straight lines up and down so it never covers the same area twice. The fast track is really easy to drive like an automatic car. So there's three ways of making the machine go forwards. We can either use our foot pedal like in a car and we'll pull away. We can push forward on our joystick to pull away. Or if we want really fine speed control, we can tap our joystick right and use this thumb roller here in the middle to make really, really precise adjustments. So a top tip, maths, computing and science have all been a huge part in developing the systems that we've just seen. So Poppy, it was great to see inside the cab and also how much technology has been used in there. But is there anything outside the cab we can have a look at? Sure, there's plenty we can take a look at now. So Poppy, what's the first feature? As you can see from looking at the fast track, it's a bit of a different shape than most tractors. And this is because our cab is centre mounted, so it's right in the middle of the machine. This creates this space here at the back that we call the rear deck. And this is an additional place to mount implements. A popular choice for this is either fertilizer sprayers or cranes. Not only does this create this space at the back, 
It also makes for a far more comfortable operator environment as the cab and the driver's seating position is not over an axle. What's this big thing in here? So this is the machine's self-leveling hydropneumatic suspension. And that's basically just a posh way of saying whatever the machine's doing, whatever's mounted on the back, on our deck or here, the machine will always stay level and keep the co operator comfortable. And while we're here, these are some big tyres. What's so special about them? So another thing that's different about the fast track compared to conventional tractors is that we have four wheel steering. This makes our machine really nimble and manoeuvrable in the yards or tight spaces because the rear wheels steer as well as the front wheels. So we've got a really tight turning circle. Wow, amazing. So on top of all of the great features we've already seen, both outside the machine and in the cab, the clue is quite literally in the name Fast Track. So this, the JCB Fast Track, is the world's fastest production tractor. And this machine can reach speeds of up to 60K. So this means far less time on the roads and more time in the field growing our food. That's just what we want to hear. Can it also help the planet? So going back to those features we spoke about in the cab of the GPS system, and then the fact that we've got four wheel steering, we can utilize what we call twin steer GPS. And this is unique to the JCB Fast Track because we can steer both axles of the machine independently to keep the machine and the implement going in a straight line and causing less damage to the soil. Well, all that's left to say is thank you so much, Poppy, for taking up your time to talk all things JCB. And if you have any questions for Poppy, you'll be able to ask them very soon. But for now, it's goodbye from us and see you soon. Well, what a fantastic video. And we've seen that you've asked a lot of questions throughout it. And we're looking forward to seeing what Poppy has to answer. Should we see what the first question is? Let's do it. So the first question we've got today is from Year 5 at Roadheath School. And the question is, do you need a different licence to drive a tractor? So when you're 16, you can get a specific licence to drive a tractor on the road. And then when you do your car test at 17 or older, uh, that will cover you for your tractor too. So you can drive a tractor on the road up to a specific weight. Amazing. Well, Lizzie and I have both driven tractors and maybe we'll see you guys driving one in the future. That would be really fun, wouldn't it? Shall we see what the next question is? Yes, so this is another one actually from Roadheath. And someone there has asked, how much can you use a tractor every day, Poppy? So tractors are really versatile and that's what we like to push at JCB with the fast track that you can use our tractor all day and all seasons. Um, as it's got so many ways to use the different implements across the farm, we make sure as well that our tractor cab is really, really comfortable because in the harvest season, some farmers can be sat in their cab for sort of you know, 12, 18 hours a day and you don't want to sit in an uncomfy seat for that long. So we make sure our tractors are a really nice place to be. And we saw that in the video with where the cab was positioned on the tractor as well. But have you got any more questions, Lizzie? Well, we do. We have a lot coming through. So thank you so much, everybody. So this one is from Class 1 Broadtown and it is how big are tractor engines? So tractor engines are very big compared to cars. So if we look at our 8000 series tractor, for example, that's 330 horsepower and that's a six cylinder 8.8 .8 litre engine. If you think about that in comparison to my car, which is just a little small hatchback, that's a 1.6 litre engine. That's wow. amazing, isn't it? Well, we've got another question from Donamore Primary School. And this one, Poppy, is what's your favourite tractor? Now, people definitely have their favourites, don't they? And I am very, very biased to JCB, of course. And my favourite tractor is one you've just seen in the video. So that's the Fast Track 4220. That's the biggest tractor in our smaller range. And it's a really, really manoeuvrable and versatile tractor. Like we spoke about in the video, it's four wheel steer. So it's great for in tight spaces and coming out of fields. Um, it's really comfortable, like we just said. And of course, it's really fast. Amazing. So I think we saw in the video how much Hoppy loves her job. But the question that we've got here is, what do you love most about working at JCB? I think my favourite thing about working at JCB is the people. So we get a lot of chances to go out on farms with all of our machinery, 
whether it be tractors, telehandlers, diggers, as we do the full range, and we get to go out onto the farms and see what difference these people are making and how our food is grown, which is really important to know where these things come from. Definitely, and I think it shows that there's more jobs than, than just being a farmer as well. You know, there's all sorts of skills that you can use in agriculture. Lots now, of different career options. Absolutely. Now, we have another question about your job, Poppy, and what inspired you to start working there? So I come from a farming background down in Devon. Um, so I've always grown up around tractors. My dad's an agricultural engineer, so there's always tractors around our house. Um, and then I joined Young Farmers at 14, and that had a huge influence on me and the career path I wanted to take. Um, and then I went to an agricultural college, as I was saying in the video, um, in Dorchester. And from there, I went on and spoke to as many different manufacturers as I could uh, to sort of look into the pathway of apprenticeships, as I knew that was that was the road I wanted to take to going into a career, um, as it allows you to earn money whilst you're learning and get your degree or your um, qualifications in the industry and get really, really good experience. Um, and JCB offered me an apprenticeship as a level three engineering technician. So I did that for three years and then came off scheme and went into my job um, in the fast track product team. I think that's great that you came from a farming background, but I think it's also really important to say that actually you don't need to be from farming, do you, to be uh, in agriculture? No, definitely not. And there's a lot of people that work in JCB that aren't. And like I was saying about my favourite parts, even if you're not from a farming background, you still have that opportunity to go out there and learn. And they're so welcoming um, to people that want to know where their food come from and the importance of the agricultural industry. We've had a couple of questions come in about how much you use a tractor. So can you use it every day or how much do you use it in a day? And we've we've touched on that. But why is it different depending on different farms? So different farms obviously are doing different things. Um, and that means they have different requirements from their tractors, even from size. So we go from 160 horsepower up to 330. Um, we see those bigger tractors in places more like uh, North America, so the United States and Canada, and then down in Australia as well, where they'll be in bigger, more open fields and working long, long hours. Whereas in the UK, we tend to see more of the 220 horsepower tractor. Um, on operations such as maize and silage, um, as we've got that really versatile tractor. We don't just work in those harvest seasons either. The rear deck, for example, means that we can mount a um, arm mower onto the back of the machine, meaning we can do lots of hedge trimming and stuff like that through the uh, autumn months as well. It's really interesting to see how many different things a tractor really can do. So we've got another question here, and this is a really good one. We've both driven a tractor. But Poppy, how hard is it to drive a tractor? So tractors nowadays are a lot easier than people think. Of course, they're huge, which can mean it can be a little bit scary to look at. But once you get behind the wheel, you're sat right in the centre of the machine. So you don't need to worry about what's happening so much to the left or the right like you would in a car. Because obviously, if you're sat in a car, you've got a big space to your left. But you've got a 360 degree view around the machine, um, which makes it a lot easier to see where you're going. And then because we use what's called a CBT, which is a continuously variable transmission, that means we don't really have gears. So it's like driving an automatic car. So you just either put your foot on the accelerator or push your joystick forward. And it's as simple as that. Well, as we said, we might see you guys driving one soon. I think it was in the video as well. All of that technology, I think that's got to help. It's so advanced nowadays, isn't it? Yes, definitely. And that's something that we've really uh, integrated, so built into our tractor with the most recent JCB Fast Track. So we uh, integrate GPS, which is uh, essentially allows the tractor to drive itself around the farm, and this is part of precision agriculture. So that ensures that we utilise and use every bit of that field to its best potential to get the most yield, to so grow the most crops. And in the video, Poppy, we looked at some of the actual parts on the tractor and somebody's asked, what is an axle? So where is the axle on the tractor and what does it do in terms of the job on the tractor? So the axles are basically where the wheels are attached. So we've got two in our machine for the front wheels and the rear wheels. Um, they work to help move the power from the engine into the transmission down to the ground so you get that traction. Um, and something that's a bit different about the JCB Fast Track, the 4000, is that it's four wheel steer. So we've got two steering axles, which help you turn really, really tight. And that's what makes them so manoeuvrable. 
really, really interesting. We've had a couple of questions about weight as well. So some of them are asking how heavy is the tractor itself, but some of them are asking how much weight can the tractor hold or pull? So the tractors themselves, I think the 4,000 is about eight ton um, unladen and the 8,000 would be about 12 ton. Um, these can both pull a lot of weight. Um, and like we were saying, they're, they're busy all year. So that, that pulling that weight is really important in applications like um, potato harvesting or silage or maize. So we make them really strong to be able to keep up. Amazing. So going back to talking about how you got into being a tractor expert, somebody here has asked, what did you have to do to get into the JCB Academy? So I think that's a really interesting question. If, if the children here wanted to get into tractor driving or anything else in agriculture, how could they do that? So there's a lot of subjects that are really important in agriculture. Um, I would say for my own path, it was um, sort of maths and science because I took an engineering route. So for me to get into my apprenticeship, I just needed the GCSE grades um, that fell into the right category for that course. But depending on the level that you want to go in at, we also offer degree apprenticeships. So if you want to come out um, of your sixth form or your college and go into the course, that's an option too but STEM subjects as a whole, so that's science, technology, engineering and maths are all really, really helpful when going into the agricultural industry in such a huge range of jobs. I think that's great to hear. So whatever your interests are, whether that be science or, you know, if you like the creative subjects as well, you can find a career or a job that you really, really love in agriculture. Absolutely. We've had another question, Poppy, about some of the parts on the tractor. And this one's about tyres. Now, we saw the tyres in that video and they are really, really big. Why do they need to be so thick? So I think the best way of thinking about it and something that I was taught at school that always sticks in my mind is that if you walk into a wet field in a pair of wellies, you'll stand on the ground. If you walk into a wet field in a pair of heels, you'll sink into the ground. So having those big, thick and wide tyres makes you have better traction. You're not going to pull into a field and sink. You're going to pull into the field and be able to drive across it regardless of the ground conditions. That's a great way to think about it. It is. As well, when you've got that um, coverage like that, you're not compacting that specific area of soil as much. So that really protects the soil health. And that's really important because when you go out and if you seed any crops or grass, they need the soil to be broken up enough that they can root down in and get a good hold on the ground for when they grow. Whereas if the ground is compacted, the roots aren't going to be able to travel as far. Really, really interesting. And again, we're seeing how some of the technology and features on a tractor are really helping the environment. So we've got another question here, and this is quite a fun question. How many people can you have sit in a tractor cab? Well, I'd say legally two people. You've got your driver and then we've got one of the uh, the best and the biggest passenger seats on the market as well. So it's really comfortable if you want to go out in a pair driving in the buddy seat. But again, because we've got one of those biggest uh, cabs on the market, I'm sure you could fit a lot of people in there if you wanted to. But I'm not sure how comfortable it would be. Above <laughs> we've had a question from Broodnell Primary here. How many people are involved in building a tractor now? We've seen how many different features there are. So I assume there's quite a few. My gosh, I don't think I'd even be able to put a number on it. There's so many departments that make up JCB Agriculture and JCB Land Power, which is where we produce the tractor. So if we think about it from a very basic level, we've got design engineers who from the bottom up um, design how the tractor will work, how the parts will fit together, test and development that take those designs and test them, put them through the different stages to make sure they're fit for the job. Um, We've got operations who build the machine, production that help in all of these stages, purchasing, buy all the parts in and make sure everything's there to build the tractor up. My role in um, product, we make sure there's people that want to buy the tractors. Um, and then there's service who make sure after the tractors are built that they're up and running, we can get any replacement parts that they need. And then there's our dealer networks that support all of the farms in their areas all across the world. And then most importantly, it's the customers that want to buy the machine because without a demand, we wouldn't be able to produce them as we'd have no one to sell them to. And it's the customers as well that feed into us the machine we want to make. Because I could stand in there and say, well, I want this on machine and this, but that's not a representation of what farmers need. 
need or want in the machine. So we make sure their opinions are in there as well. Really, really interesting. And as we said, there's so many jobs that you can do. You don't have to be in the field and you don't have to be in an office either. There's such a variety. Um, we've had a question about breakdowns. Now, JCBs are a very good tractor, but sometimes breakdowns do happen. So how do you help the farmer if it does happen? So like we were saying, there's so many people that uh, contribute to the process of the tractor. And when it comes to breakdowns, um, JCB service and our JCB dealers work 24-7 to make sure the machines are always working, always doing the best for the farmers, and they are crucial in making sure that the machines do keep running. You know, we couldn't keep it without them. They're always there for the support and the backup. Which, oh, sorry. I think for farmers that's really reassuring, isn't it? Because sometimes those jobs that you're doing just need to be done that day, don't they? can't stop just because the machine's breaking down, so that's something we're really keen to push is that we do offer that 24 seven support. I think that's also reassuring from um, maybe the children's perspective that they're gonna get their dinner on their plate and have lots of amazing food because of this. So stopping us from breaking down. We've uh, had another question here. Um, and this says, what does JCB stand for? So JCB stands for Joseph Cyril Bamford. And that was um, the founder of JCB back in 1945 and the business is still in the family now. So the new chairman is Anthony Bamford or Lord Bamford, and that is Mr. JCB's son. Um, and JCB is one of the biggest privately owned companies um, and it really keeps it in the family and the family values are present throughout the whole company as we have the customer at heart. So every decision, like we were saying, is made with the customer in mind. We have sense of urgency, which makes sure, like we we're saying again with the service that we do everything possible to keep the machines running. And finally, um, the company motto, motto is um, Jemais Content, which means we're never content in what we do and we're always striving to do better and to find a better way to make our machinery. Well, I think that's really interesting because we've had a question saying, why do you need to, so much technology to drive a tractor? Well, you don't really because some of the older ones didn't have all the new technology but it's about what this technology does for the environment and farmers and ways of working, isn't it? Yeah, and also as you think about it, we've got such a growing population at the moment. Um, I think we reached 8 billion people on Earth um, a year or so ago. So that's more mouths to feed, but we've got sort of the same amount of farmers in the UK, so they've got to do more, grow more, produce more to feed all of these mouths. So as easy as we can make it for them to operate the machines, the easier it will be for them to grow all this food for all these people. So we've had a really interesting question here, and I think it's very relevant because it has just been Christmas. Do farmers use tractors when it's snowing? Absolutely, and that's something as well that we offer at JCB. So we don't actually only produce our farm, sorry, our tractors for farming. We also produce a range of orange tractors, which we call utility spec, and they've got a special type of tire. <clears throat> that's a bit more similar to the tyres you'd have on your car and they allow it to operate on the roads um, to make sure they do snow clearance so we can sell fast tracks with snow ploughs and snow clearing um, and snow blowing equipment so it sucks the snow off the road and over the hedge so people can keep driving. Brilliant. That's really, really good. And I guess it, it just keeps the show on the road, doesn't it? When we're talking about making sure that we can keep producing the food. Well, I learned something today. So <laughs> what's the next question, Becca? We have one asking, why is the back wheel bigger than the front wheel? So on the Fast Track 4220, it's actually not. We're one of the only tractors that's got equal sized wheels. But on the 8000, we do. And that's got a slightly bigger back wheel, but a bit less than other conventional tractors and that helps us get more traction. Pretty interesting. So we mentioned there about technology helping the environment. So we've got a very good question here, and it says, can you get electric tractors? We don't produce electric tractors um, because we're too big a horsepower. Uh, the general trend of the market at the moment is that electric's likely not to be seen above 100 horsepower. But at JCB, we do offer what we call our E-Tech range, and that's made up of an electric loader, so a telehammer, which helps you move things around the farm or around building sites. Uh, we've got an electric mini digger, uh, an electric dumper. And wow. we're always innovating to find better solutions 
for renewable sources and lowering our greenhouse gas emissions. That's so exciting. It is, and I think the future of tractors will be really exciting to see if the electric ones can get bigger as well. And um, talking of other things on the tractor, how does the GPS work, somebody's asked, and that's the thing which makes the tractor steer, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got um, a dome on the roof of the tractor called a receiver, and that essentially um, receives signal from the satellites up in the sky, which positions the tractor, it knows exactly where it is. You then drive around the, your fields and that will mark a boundary line. Once that boundary is in your machine, it will plot what's called AB lines, and that basically just breaks your field up into parallel lines, judging by the width of your implement. So then your machine can drive up and down these AB lines, and because the machine can do the maps for you, it means your implement never crosses over the same patch. So then you're not putting either two lots of seed or two lots of fertilizer in the same place. So it's better for the farmer and better for the yield. That's incredible. It is, and I'm a farmer and I've used the GPS technology at home. And it's amazing that you can just press a button and it picks up a straight line, but it means that I'm less tired at the end of the day too. And we saw all of that technology in the cab, in the video, but Poppy, what's your favorite piece of technology in the tractor? That's a really good question, whoever asked that. Question. <laughs> um, I think my favourite bit, again, it's something we covered in the video, <clears throat> is the suspension, which is pretty unique to JCB. So we were saying that that's a self-leveling hydro-pneumatic suspension, <clears throat> which essentially works to keep the machine level all the time. And that is what makes the fast track so comfortable at such high speeds. Which is really, really interesting as well, that it's a really unique feature to JCBs. Um, now we've been talking about horsepower and that's the measure of power in a tractor um but what does a horsepower actually mean is it actually a horse that is a good question and quite a difficult one as well um i don't know the exact conversion but i should imagine it's you know before tractors it literally was horses um that pulled pulled the plows the different implements on the farm and to be honest in engineering we actually use um the measurement of kilowatts for engines rather than horsepower but because farmers are more used to the to horsepower being a tractor it's easier to compare to other brands so we convert it for our literature and our our marketing material these are some excellent questions everybody thank you so much so we have another one here which is bigger a digger or a tractor that's a good question as well because it could be either if you compared a mini digger to a 8330, which is 330 horsepower, the tractor would be far bigger. But also, you could get huge, huge diggers that are sort of quarrying or building sites, and these would be much bigger than some tractors. It really just depends on the job. Yeah. That's really, really interesting. Now, we have a another question here, and somebody's asking, where are the tractors built? Is it a big factory, or how does it work? So we have a big factory called JCB Landpower, which is based in Cheadle, Staffordshire, and they're all built in the UK. So every fast track you see all around the world came from that one factory. <laughs> well, do we have time for one more question? Oh, yes. Let's find one more question. Or if you're really quick, we might get a new one in. Um, oh, this is a good one. What's the hardest part of your job? Because in all jobs, there's some things which are easy and some things which are more difficult. But is there something which is a challenge or that you really like to be able to solve? Sometimes I think the hardest bits are when you've had a, a you know, been out on a great visit or have been traveling a lot. And then you've got to go back to the office and do a lot of the paperwork and catch up with all of the emails that you've missed since you've been away. Um, and sometimes that can be a bit boring after, you know, being out and about. For a while um, but it's all the things that you need to do to be able to get out and do all of the good stuff absolutely luckily you get the chance to go and work with the yes, tractors definitely. a lot of the time and that's the best bit so we look we look forward to those bits <laughs> rather than the, uh, the boring side oh well all we can say is thank you for your amazing questions we don't have time for any more but i hope we answered a lot of your a lot of them which came through thank you so much for joining us i think that's all, all that's left is to say thank you so much to poppy thank, thank you poppy. poppy um well we'd love to see you again next week it's the same time next friday and we're going to be meeting farmer amy and if you've been watching we would love to see your photos please share them with us and target nfu education so from us now it's here it's goodbye and see you next week bye